Hi everyone, I wanted to make a quick video on what I put in go home bags as I call them. Um, so these are the bags that I make for the kittens when they are going to be adopted. Now the bags I make are a lot different than the bags that I used to make and that's because I used to be fostering through a shelter. So when I would foster through a shelter I didn't know who was going to adopt them like I don't know 85% of the time unless it was someone I knew that was already going to adopt them. So let's go over what I would first put in a go home bag for if you're fostering for a shelter. Make sure to check with your shelter and make sure that it's okay that you send the bag home with them. Usually they don't have a problem with it, but you know, you always want to check. So uh, first thing is let's start with the very basics, which is food. Um, if I think they're going to be adopted really soon or if they have a favorite food, I send them with enough food for a couple days, something to transition into the new food of whatever the new owner is going to feed. So hard food and I mark on the bag what type of hard food it is and then a couple cans of whatever you've been feeding or like I said whatever their favorite food is. Some treats because they love treats like these. Yum. And you can just open one of these bags and put them in little ziplocs. That's what I used to do and distribute them between the bags. Uh, toys. If they have a favorite toy, I would usually send that with or I would write in the note that I send with them what their favorite toy was, if it was something more expensive, bigger that they need to buy. But here's an example of a really cheap $2 toy that they love. Pearl, do you have to be using that toy right now? See, Pearl loves that toy. She's probably going to take it with her. Um, and then because I'm extra, I usually include baby photos. So for example, this is derp derp. And uh, I, since I know that the people didn't get to see them when they were little, I like to send pictures of when they were super tiny and they were with me. So I usually send, you know, three to five pictures and then I let them know about my Instagram and where they can see the rest of their baby pictures. Here comes Jack. There we go. <laughs> now, this isn't like the typical note card I send. I send like a long letter. And in that letter, I kind of describe like their journey with me. If there was anything, you know, that I wanted to let them know about, you know, he was really sick and I had to bring him back from the brink of death or, you know, this guy has meant so much to me and I'm so sad to see him go, but I'm so happy he's going to find a forever family. Just things that you want them to know that it's going to make you feel a little bit better that if that family knows how much you loved this kitten, right? Um, and I usually would say like, 90% of the time I usually hear back from the people that adopt and say, you know, thank you for the note. Uh, I can tell how much work you put into it and I can tell how much you cared for them and we really appreciate it and stuff like that. Um, and then the last thing I usually send when I have time is a little tie blanket. Just something like this. It's not huge. It's just big enough that it can fit in their crate or whatever and it has the scent of either like their mom or their siblings on it and it's something to comfort them in their new home and have that scent of their family on it so that's a good idea like a good idea of what i usually put together for if i'm fostering a kitten that's going back to a shelter and i won't know who's adopting it so let's move on to if i do know who's adopting them i still send the blanket i still send the food Usually they all know about my Instagram and so they know where to go look for the baby photos. So I don't send those. I don't send a note. I still send toys. Uh, if they had a favorite toy, I still send that. Um, the only extra things that I send are if you are working with a vet, ask them if they want to give you free coupons for first exams because usually shelters do that when people adopt. So if they want to, it's basically giving them, you know, possibly free lifelong business if they want to give a coupon for the first time that you're bringing your pet back to that rescue. So I have a coupon for their first vet visit after me if they're local, if they can go to that area. And then I include, of course, here we have Ariel and Sebastian, their paperwork from the spay and neuter clinic. And uh, this is something I go over, of course, with the adopters when they get here. It, you know, says the date that they were spayed and neutered, if anything went wrong, 
not usually anything goes wrong, but like, oh, we gave them fluids or they had gingivitis or something like that. So include those and it includes the microchip number. Um, and you always want to give them the information on how to transfer that microchip into their name if that's what they want to do. But technically, I think I own like 40 cats on my microchip thing because people always forget to change it. So, um, And then I always have an adoption contract. And that's because they're not going through a shelter and you want to make sure that you have some of the same rules put in place for if that animal ever needs to be rehomed. So like my contract says, you know, things like you're not going to declaw this cat. You're, um, you know, if for any reason, you know, life happens and sometimes you have to rehome an animal, you're gonna come to me first and see if I can help you with it. Things like that. You can look up um, foster contracts online. A lot of shelters have examples of them. Uh, so this is my pile usually of what I send home. When I'm fostering 30 to 40 kittens, I usually just wind up sending them with paperwork and saying to get out because I have too many and I don't have time to put these bags together. Um, and I send the food, but um, you know, it makes it a lot easier to be able to say goodbye. I feel like a lot of the times when you feel like you're kind of preparing them for that next step and when you get to say, you know, here's your, here's your suitcase, you know, bring it to your new home and know that I love you. So um, that's a little example of, of what I make for them. And if you have any questions or other ideas of what you guys put in their go home bags, go ahead and comment below and let me know. And uh, I'm going to now put together Sebastian and Ariel's bags for tomorrow because they're being adopted. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye.